below, talk about it, and feel free to ask any questions you wish. In, in relation to the issue of burkas in New South Wales, uh, myself and other senior police have been following that issue closely in recent times, and we're particularly interested, of course, in this morning's announcement that the New South Wales government are going to change legislation. Uh, we've had a good look at it here in Queensland, and we think that um, there's no need to change legislation. We think that the current laws are quite adequate, that our policies are adequate. And the other thing, too, is that here in Queensland we have not experienced any trouble or difficulty uh, with the wearing of burkas, or for that matter, uh, with our relationship with the Islamic or Muslim community at all. Uh, we have a very good relationship with the Muslim community. We're very grateful to the Muslim community for that relationship. Uh, we're able to talk to the uh, President, for example, of the Islamic Council of Queensland um, and, uh, and with the Imams and the various mosques. So we think that's very positive. What we are going to do, though, is follow what they do in New South Wales with great interest. We'll look at the legislation, we'll look at how that's introduced and enforced by the New South Wales Police. And if we think at any time in the future there is a need to do anything here in Queensland, we'd just follow the normal process, and that is we'd um, take the matter forward to the Police Minister and ask him to take it up with the Government. But at the moment we're quite comfortable that the situation here in Queensland doesn't need any new legislation, or for that matter any new policy or operational changes in terms of the way we do business. Can you ever think identification issues as a result of somebody wearing a burqa in Queensland? Not that I'm aware of, not to say that that hasn't happened, but we're not aware of it at all, and again, we believe, um, you know, that, that the wearing of a burqa, as I understand it, is part of the, the culture of the Islamic and Muslim community, and it hasn't been an issue or a problem for us. Um, the only other thing that's probably similar is the wearing of a turban by the Sikh community, and again, uh, we have a very good relationship with the Sikh community. But I think the, uh, the, the legislation is the covering of the face, the, 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 you know, the sea community only cover the, the head. That, that's right, and there is, you're quite right, there is quite a distinction, but it's the only other thing that's remotely similar in terms of a cultural issue and wearing a form of headdress is the Sikh turban and the burqa worn by uh, the Islamic and Muslim community. Commissioners, sorry. No, Commissioner, there are obviously instances where you, you need to be able to identify people and that may require the requesting of or anything else that might come to You're exactly right, and if a, tra if a traffic officer pulls someone over who's uh, wearing a burqa, uh, it's quite within reason for the traffic officer to ask that person to lift the burqa so that the traffic officer could compare the person's face to the photograph if the traffic officer thought that was necessary. And, and as I understand it, so far we haven't had a problem in that space at all. Is that legislated for if they refuse? Is there, a, uh, is there an issue that if they refuse to lift the burqa? Uh, no, it's not. Um, there's, there's nothing specific there, and maybe that's what they're doing in New South Wales. I'm not sure of the detail there. We haven't found that necessary here as yet. Certainly under the current laws in terms of traffic offences, uh, a police officer can require a person to provide correctness of their identity. And that usually only occurs though, where they don't have their driver's licence with them. Um, so, um, and we do have other powers as well, the powers of search. So that if, for example, police have reasonable and genuine grounds to believe that a person might have a firearm, to uh, search the person concerned. They must have grounds. But one of the things about our policy in that space is that um, we are very conscious of appropriate um, uh, protocols in terms of that. So, for example, it's a woman that's to be searched. We would want to have that done in privacy by a female police officer. So it's about respecting the cultural differences as well as those sorts of protocols? Yeah, I think that's really important, and uh, I mean, we pride ourselves here in Queensland, I think, on being a multicultural community. I think we pride ourselves on very tolerant and we're very accepting. And I think it's worth mentioning as well for, that, that, that um, the Muslim community are not new arrivals in Queensland. They've been here for a long time, and in fact, only a couple of years ago, the Holland Park Mosque celebrated its centenary, its hundredth year of operations. So the Muslim community have been part of the fabric of our society for a very long time. I think they've made a wonderful contribution. I think we've got a lot to be quietly proud about here in Queensland in terms of the way we get on with each other. Perfect. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks.